Okay, so you've got a great idea for an illustration. It's really good in your head. It looks awesome. It looks amazing. It has all of the right feelings. Often this idea can be very detailed. It can be very rich. It may be vague, but nevertheless, it seems like it has a lot of potential. Sometimes also, though, we can just have ideas that are kind of half-baked. You have the start of an idea. Hey, I want to draw this thing. Hey, I want to draw that thing but I'm not really sure how to make it look interesting. In both of these cases, it's really easy though to accidentally have your image look dull and boring. In the first case, you might have a really exciting idea, but as you go to create it, as you go to start your process for realizing this amazing image, you can run into trouble and it can be tricky to know how to match that sort of amazing idea you have with the reality on the ground, the image you actually end up making. And it can also be the case that if you don't have a really solid idea and you kind of just try and draw it anyway, that look, it's not that interesting. We often struggle to really create these living, breathing worlds, images that express a lot of good artistic composition, illustrative quality. They have our foreground, middle ground background, and we need ways to actually think about how to make this happen. Now, luckily, there are actually a lot of really good tools that you can employ. And in this video, what I want to really do is dig into the processes and give you some simple frameworks so that you can more reliably turn your ideas into an image that is actually good, that is exciting and lives up to your dreams and aspirations. As usual for a video on the Drawing Codex channel, this is going to be a longer video more laid back, relaxed. We're just gonna chill out and talk about drawing. It's not heavily edited, it's not fast paced, it's just me with a pencil, but we do have some cool books. We've got uh, Ed Capain's Composition of Outdoor Painting, which has a lot of good information on how to abstractly make things look good as does Andrew Lemus's creative illustration. So again, think of this more like a, you know, sort of drawing lesson. This is a big part of what I do, you know, as a drawing teacher all the time. So again, this is how I roll. And uh, again, hopefully you'll appreciate the type of video that this is. One thing I want to share with you is that much of this comes down to focus. So before we get started, again, just a quick tip. So much of why I think images often kind of just end out, end up being a bit meh is that we don't have a good clear image in our own mind of where we want to go. Now, again, you may be saying, but that's, that's the whole point. I don't really know where to go, but part of developing an image from this idea and, you know, maybe making thumbnails, planning it in some way, whatever way you plan it, part of that is about clarifying the focus and the point of the image about you going on this exploration, this journey to really figure out what is that idea in my head? How do I make it better? Or if you don't have a really solid idea in your head, how to get one and how to really create something that is going to allow you to sound a clear visual note to make sure that you have impact and emotion in your finished image. So much of this is about clarity and focus, making sure that you reinforce these ideas as you make decisions along the way. Anyway, let's get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about illustration or picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. This charts my journey going from someone who looked really wasn't that good at drawing or art to becoming a professional artist being published. I discuss topics such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to think about composition, creating thumbnails for your scenes, as well as a few ideas surrounding how to think about getting professional work. It's free and the link will be in the description. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, what I want to do before we jump into the demo drawing element of this particular video is, is look at, I guess, the idea linked to different imagery and different artists having different requirements and needs out of their art. Some art is more functional than others, and thus its need to, you know, be as interesting as possible is potentially diminished. 
What I'm really discussing here is that idea of how do we maximize the aesthetic beauty, the interest, the illustrative quality, the composition of the imagery to make it look good. Not all art has that as its primary goal. And again, that's something I want to look at and sort of dig into because it does speak very much to the way that we often have priorities and plans as we go into our imagery. So if we look at uh, Miyazaki, and this is the art of Nausicaa, of the Valley of the Wind. This is the preparatory work that he was doing to explore what this movie, you know, should be like. Um, and uh, before it was a movie, it was actually a, a manga. And, you know, I think there are a lot of the, the covers and, and other sort of elements that, you know, went into, you know, developing this. But a lot of this work is actually before that looking at many, many different versions and stories and how they kind of combined into creating that world. A lot of this is um, about exploring different ideas. And although some of these images are very well composed, they're very good. Again, what you tend to find is that good artists manage to do all things at once. They manage to make art functional and uh, they also manage to make it look really good, have a good illustrative quality to the work. It's important if you're doing this type of stuff to be able to convince people that, look, the stuff you're doing is good, that it is going to be you know, an interesting final product. And, and obviously, that's a, a big part of what he's doing. But not every image is you know, maxed out in terms of you know, illustrative quality, right? Some things are more functional. Some things are more a matter of being clear. And it's just you know, worth mentioning, I guess, that different art has different requirements you know we're not always trying to just maximize the um you know aesthetic beauty of the things that we're doing nor are we always trying to enhance the surface of the painting right the specific little strokes now again what you'll notice is that artists who are good tend to create work that has this kind of natural sense of sort of beauty right like the surface of the painting is quite good but nevertheless i i think it's clear to say that these are done primarily to function as design drawings. And it's just worth noting that, as I said, different art has different requirements. But what we're going to talk about in this video is how we try and maximize the aesthetic beauty, how, how we try and you know, make it look as good as possible. Because um, ultimately, you want to be able to do all of that, all of the above. You want to be able to do both. And you can certainly see that someone like Miyazaki is definitely able to do you know, all of the things that are required, right? These little functional sketches that are very, very pretty. Um, even the really simple ones, right? Just have this sort of effortless quality to them. Now, some art needs to be both functional and have a really high level of, uh, of aesthetic, where, again, one of the main reasons that you might look at an image of Dean Cornwell's is because there is sort of a graphic beauty to it that the surface of the painting is you know, very interesting and that, you know, there's an abstract level of sort of quality to it. Um, so this book, again, uh, Dean Cornwell, Dean of Illustrators. And, you know, what you notice about someone like Dean Cornwell is even though the art is very functional, there is a high degree of, um, you know, expressiveness, uh, personality. The surface of the painting is very refined, right? There's an expressive nature to the way the strokes are put down to the way that helps the meaning the composition is you know very worked it's it's refined a lot of work goes into developing this and, and sort of really thinking about the you know different sort of messages that this is trying to get across and one of the interesting things you know you often see about you know these sort of period illustrations is you know how it's just characters in an environment but yet it tells a larger story. There's a lot going on here. And I think it is the the finer details of the way that the abstraction is kind of handled that really elevates these beyond just uh, a commodity illustration that, you know, is just of, you know, people talking that would just be throw away. The reason that we often still look at you know, a Dean Cornwall illustration, even though it was just there to kind of illustrate a particular point in a story or something like that. And, you know, that probably that story is outdated now, that it still rises above that because 
there's so much effort put into the story, the characters, the quality. And again, all of these other elements that really sell the picture, like the blue colors here, um, the, the thought that's been put into composing all of the different elements that are here, all the different little bits. Um, now, again, a big part of what I'm going to talk about using this sort of like simple framework for, for really sort of trying to figure out how to add stuff to your imagery or sort of get to this level insofar as we can is that often what you're trying to look for in a scene on a story where you kind of know what needs to be there, you're trying to look for other things that would be in the scene and other ways and leverage points that are going to allow you to increase the abstract, like just pure beauty of the image, right? The way it just is going to entertain the eye and the way that you can use different elements that might be in the scene to help you manage and improve the composition. Often, it's a matter of refining, tweaking, and adjusting and moving these little things around so that you better create an interesting composition and so that you better highlight and emphasize the story or the main point of your image. But yeah, if we look at Cornwell's sort of working of his methodology, you can see that he places, um, you know, a huge emphasis on really, you know, developing and, and working these images. If you look at some of the stuff that's later on in the book, again, you would look at the the way that it's painted and you would imagine that, you know, this is a very sort of spontaneous painting, right? There's so much abstract brushwork. There's this kind of almost uh, impressionist style pointillism. It looks very free, but if you see how these are planned, you kind of notice that there's a lot of structure under all of that, that the surface of the painting is on purpose and that for every you know, sort of like loose brushstroke there, there was planned a, a very sort of solid amount of form. I think it's actually Dean Cornwell's, you know, form drawing and, and structural working out of images that really inspired me to, you know, get better and really dive into the idea of construction drawing. Um, I think, uh, you know, literally looking at this book and seeing how he had worked out how all of these characters were going to go. Um, that has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. But um, yeah, you, you can see that the, there's many, many different ways of working. But Dimo Como has an excellent surface of the painting, right? Like the, the, the quality of the way it looks um, is very, very good. But, you know, that is part of the functionality and why it sort of exists. So again, you have different reasons for creating different levels of, of quality and different purposes. And that will obviously affect the way that your images look. But um, yeah, let's look at uh, something that's a little bit more abstract next. So this book is Yoshitaka Amano's Kaiten. And this has a lot of great Yoshitaka Amano art in it. If you're not aware, he did a lot of the concept art for Final Fantasy um, early, early on and really defined a lot of the aesthetic. Now, one of the interesting things is if, if we sort of look at Amano's work, and I, I use him because I think he's such a good example of someone who kind of lives in this pure fantasy realm of artistic sort of expression, you know, it's so interesting the way that he makes things work. And I think this really speaks to the point of this entire video, which is that typically when you're going to create an image, you have something that is key to that image, that there's a central idea or a thing that it's based around that may be an idea or it may be something you develop as you, you know, work it. But either way, the point is that often if you look at any of these, there's something that is sort of fundamental to what it is. Like, what what is this a picture of? Like, if you imagine a robot was like, trying to describe it they'd say like oh it's it's like a person on a horse but the reason we're interested in it is not because it's a person on a horse right we, we rarely sort of look at these and and think of it that way or at least you know i don't um it's often the the other elements of it that really kind of make these more interesting and and make the images sort of rise above the simple subject matter um that that's there 
And this is where I think that the basic framework that we can sort of think of that will sort of help you to break down and, and, and think about how to make your images more interesting is to, again, look at the basics of what you're painting. Try and really, you know, get down to brass tacks. Like, what are you actually doing? And you need to separate what that key idea is and then what else do you have to play with? Because typically you have some elements of composition or idea, and this might be part of an illustration brief, or it may just be part of your idea somewhere. You have some things that are fixed that can't be changed. And then you have a huge variety of things that can be changed. So here as an example, you might say, what we have is a bunch of flying horses in front of the moon, right? That's the idea. If a robot described this, that would be what you saw. But obviously it's more than that. There's something interesting happening here. And I think as artists, your job is to think about how do you make that idea more interesting? And most importantly, what are the tools that you have to do that within the image? And it's often our ability to focus on these things that will allow us to go into a bit more of creative flow when it comes to solving problems and, and actually coming up with something interesting. Um, if you just sort of paint things or draw things, even though it may be fantastical, it's not always going to have like, you know, like a really high quality look to it. It's not always going to be as interesting as you might want. You know, here you just have a picture of, uh, you know, the female form. What makes it interesting is, you know, in many ways, the hair, right? The hair can be manipulated. The hair can go over wherever it wants. In a similar way, the costumes here can flow and go where they want. They can create compositional movement. You have a lot of freedom with those. And those are the things that will give you that ability to be expressive, to say something different with what you're actually painting. Um... And, you know, you've got some of these types of images where, like, look, I'm not even really sure what is sort of going on. It's like sort of, you know, to that next degree of abstraction. But again, it's often just thinking, what are the other elements that you have that are going to create interest, that are going to make this not boring? You've got some characters sort of flying through the air. The thing that kind of makes it more interesting, though, is the billowing cloth, the clothes behind them. It's these things that are arranged in a particular way where you have little peaks of color, you have patterns, you have the way these things are overlaid, the way these kind of, um, you know, create sort of motion and movement. These are the things that make it, you know, uh, an actual illustration, not just, you know, a picture of something happening. And your job is often to find out and discover what those things are in the image. So that's like the first step is think about what needs to be there and then what else could you add and if you can figure out how to use that to make the image more interesting. Now that's a little bit of an abstract concept but I think often this is something we really miss as artists and this is often the reason why you know a Yoshitaka Amano face is more interesting than someone else's face because there is an ability to add things to it, to make it more interesting. And it's the ability to figure out how to do that that I think often makes things have that fantastical, artistic feeling. Um, this is why if you want like another example, someone like Loish is really good at, you know, just making simple subjects very, very entertaining. You just have, you know, girls, girls' faces plus one or two things. And then all of a sudden you have this sort of symphony of imagery that, is much more than if what you just described it, right? Um, there's not necessarily a story going on in any of these, but visually we are nevertheless entertained. Someone who has written about composition is Edgar Payne, and Edgar Payne is, has the famous book Composition of Outdoor Painting, where a lot of the concepts that you would actually find in a book such as Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis, uh, you know, this is probably where a lot of these ideas come from, right? So you see a lot of the same ideas from Creative Illustration, um, you know, have a bit of a framework here. And that's probably because there was more of like an oral tradition of teaching those things in ateliers and, and workshops and universities, etc. throughout the years. But Edgar Payne really, um, you know, has a lot of these sort of seminal ideas about developing and grouping shapes and creating different patterns 
with these sort of little compositional thumbnails and, you know, really sort of digging into why images look good and how to sort of organize compositional layouts, thinking about, you know, different contours, uh, balance, using lines, rhythm. Uh, this is where a lot of it sort of comes from. And, and also, again, you know, making sort of groups of patterns, organizing the image into, you know, circular shapes, um, S curves, or, you know, other sort of letters from the alphabet to kind of help understand and organize the image to make it look interesting, right? Here you have a whole bunch of different ways to create boat illustrations. And the trick is that, you know, the way you really make it interesting is to work the composition. There's no story here. All you've got to go on is the abstract nature of the image. Now, if we look at Edgar Payne's actual actual work, you can see that, again, he did live up to um, a lot of those ideals. And uh, this is the kind of thing that even, even on video, this is not really going to come through. And I'm imagining the originals are even better. That There is a similar, similar to um, Dean Cornwell, a bit of that kind of pointillism effect. And yeah, I can imagine the originals for these would be really, really amazing. Um, so again, these need to be very abstract. They need to be, they don't have much functionality to them at all. There really is no reason for these images to exist other than to look pretty on a wall. And so it's very much a matter of, you know, serving that master and making sure that, you know, these things do have the, the maximum amount of abstract composition possible. So anyway, a lot of that is to say that basically different imagery is created for different reasons. And there's a, there's a really important lesson there because often what we need to do as artists is figure out what tools we have and how many of these tools we have to make the images that we're creating look good. So what I'll do next is really sort of dig into, you know, a good way to break this down from the beginning. And then we'll do some demos and I'll sort of do some sketching and we'll sort of talk about how we can evolve these ideas and, you know, how I might actually apply them. All right, so here I've got some quick notes just to go over the, the simple framework and, you know, the idea that I think we can use when we're attacking imagery. So as I said, the key is to identify what is the key element or the key idea that needs to be in your image. Now there's often one or more of these things. So your first job is to define what is essentially fixed, what's nailed to the floor, and what can you be creative with. Some parts of your imagery are gonna be able to be creative. You're gonna be able to move them at will and mold compositions out of them. Other elements are gonna to need to be where they are and you can't mix with them, you can't mess with them. And this also leads into the idea behind this, which we'll get to. So the first thing is separate out the idea, right? The key element from the rest of your image. Um, now, again, as an example here, I've got some, some little sort of examples here that we can use. If we think about what's fixed, I'm just going to create some very simple illustrations as a demo of, you guessed it, it's a fantasy elf girl, because um, that's typically what I do when I'm doing these demos. Now, the point here is this is fixed. It is a fantasy elf girl. This thing needs to be in the image, but this thing is not inherently interesting. There's nothing inherently <laughs> visually interesting about this. Um, what I have to do is define, like, what are the key elements? So if I have a fantasy elf girl and she's in a particular environment. And let's say in this case, she's in a forest, right? She's in a forest. What I need to do is define what are the key elements that I can use to mold that image that, that, I, that are going to be able for me to employ a lot of the concepts that you might find, again, in Edgar Payne's composition of outdoor painting or creative illustration by Andrew Loomis. Now, the best way to think about it is like these are the tools, right? So you want a, a toolkit of things that you can use to think about how to make images interesting. And in the beginning, what you kind of have is, is often like, you know, you can read these books and you get a lot of tools, but 
when you're using tools, you kind of got to know which tool goes where. Right? Like, how do you solve a problem with this sort of tool set? And then how do you sort of build your own tool set and refine it over time and, you know, get the ones you like and, you know, get it really sort of dialed in. Every artist kind of has their own little tool set, right? Um, and they're not always complicated. Uh, it's often just a matter of sort of, you know, finding the things that work for you. But initially, with all images, there are things that need to be there and there are things that either don't need to be there or are highly malleable. And this often comes down to the idea you have in your head in the beginning, the feeling that you're trying to get in the beginning, or again, you might just sort of start with a half-baked idea. And that's fine, right? That's a totally fine way to work. But separating out these two ideas is key. What needs to be there and what do we have to work with? The third thing that is worth thinking about is what is the point, right? So... The way that we think about the point of the image or the story or the narrative or the emotion is going to be vital in the way that we form and you know solve these problems. So again, you can come at this from any particular angle. You could start with a vague idea, right? Again, what I'll do is, and these are just for illustrative purposes only, right? I'm really just kind of having fun. But let's think about if we draw our elf girl in a forest. And let's start by saying, let's just make this a, um, you know, a particular type of image, right? Let, let's sort of make it wistful. Let's try and make it calm. Let's try and make it, you know, I guess kind of, uh, what would it be? Um, relaxed. So we still need an interesting image, right? We still need something that's not sort of boring. But often in the beginning, what, what you're faced with is just like, you know, getting, getting over this very standard, I'm just drawing a character, right? I need to make it more interesting. We need to add some illustrative quality to it. And yeah, there's like a million different ways that, that you can do that. But what I need to do is think about what are the tools I have to work with. So for a forest, again, the things that I have are trees, bushes, grass, animals, branches. And something else that's really worth thinking about is in most images, you actually have shadows that can be a major, major benefit to sort of tweaking your composition. But yeah, if we kind of just think about in the beginning, I have a character, how can I make this more interesting, or how can I improve the composition, the abstract quality of it, so that people are going to actually be enticed enough to actually, you know, look at it for more than five seconds. Now, again, just doing a demo, these things are not always, you know, the most entertaining, right? But yeah. What, what I'm what I'm trying to do here is is think about something that's organized right an image that that feels kind of organized so I have these different little props that I can use and I've talked a little bit about this basic idea when it comes to um, thinking about backgrounds right same sort of framework that I use there right we have trees right you probably have tree roots that you can put in. Um, we have sort of bushes, right? Just doing this super quick, right? You got grass. Um, I'd also have, you know, sort of flowers, right? Within that grass, uh, we might have animals, right? You could have a little, right? Sort of dragon or something like that if this is a fantasy. Right? Environment, yeah, it might be a little whatever. Um, branches, right? And I could have, you know, smooth, flowy branches, or I could have, you know, jagged sort of evil branches. And we'll get to that in a minute. Or again, you can think about some things being in shadow, right? Some things being in light. So I, I have elements that I need to think about. Now, you may be thinking, look, this is way too, you know, this is way too technical <laughs> for me. Um, but, but I think it's, it's important to just frame this. You can do this mentally. 
um, in the beginning. But but what this does is is it allows you to think about okay, like what things do I have to move around this composition? What things do I have to change how the look of this goes? So again, I've just got character. She's holding some kind of spear, um, and you know I've got like a tree here. And I'm thinking here I'm going to sort of lean into this idea of an L-shaped composition. So thinking about bump, 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 right? There's a reverse L, right? It's going to have a bit of geometry to it. It's going to be a little bit more organized, more calm, more relaxed. And I'm going to think about how we group imagery, right? Um, sorry, shapes and things like that. Because this, this is one of the concepts you will learn, again, as a tool, is that, you know, we don't just want things standing there. We, we want to sort of think about how we group the shapes. So, you know, let's also think about maybe the character has some sort of cape or something like that. So we have a cape. Boom. Boom. Right. And I'm really going to think about how we group these ideas together. So again, very sort of 80s um, classic uh, fantasy illustration. Again, I could do this stuff for for days. Um, but yeah, not the most original, but that's all right. Right. So we're going to think about how we group these ideas. Let's get a let's get a darker pen. I think that'll allow me to flow a little bit better. Right. So what are the elements I've got? I have here probably also in part of the character where I can move the hair around. You know, I can make the I can make the hair, I can make the hair flowy, I could I could do whatever I want. All of these things are things that I can change. I could change the way the right, you know, the way the spear is held. There's a million different things that I can do to help make it more interesting. Now, what will make it more interesting is thinking about composition. Thinking about how you, you know, make sure that you're following or organizing things in some particular way. Here I'm going to have some bushes, right? So here I've got some bushes. I'm going to use these. And you could refine these. Again, this is a thumbnail. This is just a, a rough plan. But here, I'm really going to try and frame the way that this looks. So it's sort of wistful, it's calm, it's relaxed, there's order to the imagery. Right, I've got this kind of shape here. Boom. 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 Again, keep drawing. Not, not that important though. Well, and again, here we could have some clouds or something, again, framing the character's face. But the point is I have this sort of, you know, more generic um, geometric composition going on. I still have some sort of dynamism, but it is organized, right? Wistful, calm, relaxed. And as I progress through the image, this is really the key. Often you'll get halfway through something and then you'll realize, you know what, this this sucks. This is boring. This is not interesting enough, right? This is so often what I deal with. Um, and, and the trick is understanding from an imagery point of view, like what, what can I do to make it more interesting? Like, like what can I add? How can I add dynamism? How can I get movement? How can I get more overlapping shape? How can I get more sort of foreground, middle ground, background, right? So you've got some notes here, foreground, middle ground, background. How can I get that happening, right? Like what can I put in the foreground? Like which is my middle ground? Right here I've got middle ground and we've got the background. H how do I organize this? And, and this really is the key to understanding when you apply particular rules and, and how you actually go about, you know, using those tools from those compositional books is we need to figure out what elements we have in our image 
And then we need to use them to combine and add to this interesting image, hopefully. Right, so again, maybe some sort of trees here or something like that. I don't know. Maybe she's on some ridge here we can see in the background. Got some clouds. Whatever it is. Um, and, and then you can, again, like, you know, you might say, well, look, Tim, it's still boring. Like, what do we do? You know, how do we add something interesting? Um, and I might say, well, you know, look, it, it's meant to be sort of calm and relaxed. So maybe we could add some flowers, right? If it's not interesting enough, if I feel like it's a bit empty, I could sort of say, okay, let's add some wildlife adornment, some decoration. And, and this is a matter of saying, like, what are the things I have? I've got sort of grass, right? I can use some grass to help push the depth. Um, again, I think that things that would go with calm are like more flowers, that sort of thing. Boom, boom, boom. And yeah, the more I kind of sit there and say, okay, what can I add? What would be interesting? Oh, I need a thing over here. We're trying to implement composition by just shifting stuff about, right? I need a thing here. I need a thing there. Um, I need a bit of extra stuff here. I need more tonality. I need more dynamism. What do we do for that, right? Oh, I've got, this is a bit empty. This is a bit like, how do I kind of take it to the next level? So it's not just a character sitting in an empty background. So, so much of this is just thinking about like, oh, I need something here. What could it be? Um, oh, maybe I'll put some grass there. Um, uh, you know, uh, I need I need this to be sort of more interesting. I need this to come forward. I need to tell the story of depth more. Well, I've got some flowers that are this big here. Maybe this bush is in front of the other one, so we'll put some bigger flowers right um, in this in this bush. Um, I can sort of tell the story of depth again by having some overlap. Whatever it is, and these things will, you know, give it this real sense of you know calm. Right? It's not this sort of dynamic. Uh, moving thing it's it's going to feel more positive and i'm going to emphasize the elements that we're talking about here now this is why it's so important to break it down i think because often in the beginning it's easy to get lost and it's easy to lose what is the point so we can kind of add things in so far as they help us to emphasize and elaborate on and bring out the story, the point of the image. So again, let's just briefly recap the, the concepts here. First is I'm defining the key elements. The key elements is it's a fantasy elf girl. She's in the forest. Now, the elf girl, I need to be able to see her, right? It's about that character. I can't hide her somewhere. The trick is what's this about and what do I have to work with? What do I have to work with? It's in a forest. I've got trees, bushes, grass, animals, branches, flowers, shadows, light, a whole bunch of things I can play with. What does it need to feel like? Oh, it needs to be calm, relaxed, wistful. Well, you know, let, let's focus on creating some order within this composition, not chaos. We want to, you know, group some of these things, create some, some order. Um, and again, you know, flowers make it feel relaxed, calm, right? You know, there's, there's no danger. I have a fairly organized L shaped composition, right? These are fairly sort of static things. There's nothing too dynamic. So yeah, we're kind of leaning into this. Now, the trick here is that often people have very fixed ways of making things interesting. So, you know, you might have like, oh, this is not looking very good. It's not very interesting. Let's make it more dynamic, right? Let's, and, and what you ha tend to have is like, the only way to sort of solve it's boring is to, is to kind of, you know, make it more dynamic or make, you know, the colors brighter. Um, but often the colors being brighter doesn't make it feel more calm or relaxed. This misses the point. Um, and, and again, so you need other tools. And this is where composition and the, the, the theories of composition become so important because you can make anything interesting. You don't need to make everything dynamic. You don't need to, you know, put, um, you know, particular anatomical attributes or, or make some sort of particular pose. Although we'll look at how we might do that in a, in a little bit with this. But you don't have to always use the same solution. This is a matter of figuring out, of finding different ways to make your image look good using the tools of composition and illustration and having some system to do that so that you have focus so you know 
What are the things you should play with? What are the things that are not fixed? I can put a million flowers here and I still have a fantasy elf girl in the forest. The trick is, do they make the, the image look better? And do they reinforce what the image is about? Okay, so next, let's look at how we basically do the same thing, but we figure out what we're going to modify to get a slightly different feeling. Now, in this case, what we can do is I'm going to still have, it's a fantasy elf girl, it's in the forest, but I want a slightly, you know, sort of different look here. I want a slightly different set of feelings. Um, and I think this this can be sort of super interesting how we sort of handle this. Um, and, and this really is how you modify what you focus on. So in this one, we're going to make things dark. We're going to make them muddy. And we're going to sort of make it dangerous. And in, in this case, I'm going to, you know, just modify things a, a little bit. Like, what can I modify to, to change this feeling? So we're still going to have a, you know, sort of elf girl in the forest. And uh, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're sort of interested in, you know, how I'm doing a lot of the drawing and sketching here, um, I'm using you know, a very similar uh, method for constructing figures to what you would see in... Um, you know, figure drawing for all it's worth by Andrew Loomis. It's kind of a modified um, Loomis method here that I'm that I'm using, and uh, this is exactly how I it's exactly how I do it. Is exactly how I sort of suggest people do it. Thinking about this sort of skeleton now. There's, there's a million ways you could kind of pose this as as well. Often, what I do is I, you know, spend a bunch of time thinking about where the different limbs would go. Right, and you know this is often, often how I play around with it. Right, stick figures. Well, um, but in this case again, I'm going to emphasize the. Let's. I'll swap to this pencil because this is sharp. Um, yeah, I'm going to sort of put the hand up here, so it's kind of like covering the the chest because that sort of seems to to really emphasize the fact that the character is in is in danger and yeah let's uh, let's think about where this face would be going so all of these are just exploratory sketches um you know we would do much many more sort of passes on this and, and really sort of figure it out if i was doing this for for real But yeah, this is what we can do. I think I'm just going to move those hips down a little bit. So we've got a slightly different pose that I'm using. Slightly different look. And yeah, let's keep this cape. But let's think about again how we, you know, how we use this idea. Now here I've done a little sort of thumbnail. I'm going to use some of these ideas here. Um... Yeah, in this case, we, we're going to use the, the same elements, right? The same, the same basic idea, but less about it's. This is less a matter of organized feeling and more a matter of chaotic feeling. So I'm going to use some tree branches because these are things that I can modify. I can put a tree branch here. I can put it here. I can put it wherever I want, right? I, I have like a lot of freedom in terms of where I place these different elements. Um, and this is the key, is the way that we're going to use composition and, and movement within the frame is very much going to be going to be based on this. So again, you know, tweak the, tweak the pose. Think about how we, you know, get it to look exactly, exactly how we want. You can fiddle around as much as you, as much as you like. Yeah, let's let's think about. We still have the cape, but instead of it being sort of smooth and down, right? We can have it come out, right? Create more sort of chaos, more dynamic, crazy shapes. 
give her a sword, slightly different sort of look. Got a hand here. Boom. And yeah, this is where I can, you know, lean into thinking about, okay, like where's my middle ground, foreground, background? How do I work this? And yeah, in a similar way, we can we can think about adding the idea of you know bushes or clumps of clumps of grass. Like I've got those to work with, and I've also just got um, a huge variety of of different branches I can use. But but this time, what we're doing is instead of using you know flowy shapes or kind of organized shapes, instead of doing this, what I'm doing is thinking about these chaotic angular sharp branches um, or we've got situations where I've got you know we could have some vines or something like that hanging down these are all just iconic elements that you would sort of typically use and, and you could get more sophisticated than this for sure um, I'm being right you know very um, basic, right? These are things you would learn in sort of concept art design school, illustration school, etc. Like, what are the iconic shapes that have a particular feeling? And uh, again, you know, I'm being pretty, uh, pretty rough with the way I sort of illustrate these bits and pieces. But again, what you sort of notice this is one of these things that I, that sort of happens is again, if I'm sort of trying to make it feel more dangerous, um, again, I'm going to end up, you know, framing the character a little bit differently and I'm working with this sort of circular composition which is something again you sort of find a lot in um, these sort of compositional texts and this is where we are just looking at how you tend to get sort of light and dark shapes that will kind of frame um, either empty space in the middle um, or again, you know, just sort of give us this kind of gap, right? So it's like most of the image is sort of taken up by something and then we sort of have a gap in the middle of it. So very sort of fundamental framing technique. And again, we can use that here. Uh, very sort of simple idea. But in this case, what do I have to work with? Well, I've got all these jagged, sharp bits and pieces. And yeah, it's just a matter of, of utilizing these as much as possible and thinking about how I'm going to play these off each other. Right, so we got the same, same thing, same cape, but slightly different look. And we can kind of mass it in and, and make it sort of match with this. Now, one of the interesting things here is, you know, we sort of need to look at what, what the story is, right, the, the danger. Um, and one of the kind of ideas that I was sort of playing with with this particular composition and, and sort of this idea is we don't want flowers, right? We want sort of more jagged shapes. But, but also I, I want to think about like where, where is this character? Um, and maybe, again, they're sort of looking at us, right? They're kind of looking at us. into the into the frame and they're kind of seeing like you know is is this is this the path forward right again thinking about simple kind of s curves right like like is this a good place to go that that is the question and and i i kind of want to make make it clear that like this is a potential place that you could go and again, this is a simple narrative idea, but the, the question is, like, what do I use to put in those particular positions? Again, we've got some bushes, right? I can I can emphasize this fact with, um, again, a bit of some sticks and things drawn across the way. And yeah, we can just keep framing, right? And And... As we we're doing before, this is where you start to think about what what do I need more of, right? Like what what am I missing? Like what's what's interesting here? What's not interesting here? What what can I add? And just think about let's make this cape a little bit bigger. 
think about what are the different elements that I have to work with that I can place to get other compositional feelings, right? So again, if I need more overlap, if I need more sort of foreground, middle ground, background, it's just a matter of, you know, adding more of these elements. Because often, you know, what we need to do with composition to make, to refine things and make it really work is, is really just, you know, think about, oh, we need a little bit more here, a little bit more there, I need a bit more of this, I need a bit more of that. This is feeling very tight, you know, this is feeling very empty. I've got too much detail here, I need a little bit more over there. And I think just having tools and understanding that, you know, look, the, the, the way you would make this interesting is just to refine and develop these particular elements and keep working on it and rearrange them. Like that is the fundamental building block of composition. You know, that's how we sort of make stuff look good. And if you can understand that, you know, someone like Edgar Payne or uh, Yoshitaka Amano can make basically anything interesting, then what you need to realize is, yeah, your task is not to, you know, change the whole concept or, you know, freak out halfway through. It's often just a matter of, you know, finessing and, and playing with these, you know, different little bits and pieces, right? The different elements that we have and just making sure as we manipulate things, we focus on danger muddiness, right? Dark, right? And, and every time I add stuff, we'll think about like, how can I make this more interesting? I go back to my sort of guiding idea, right? Because this is really the thing that will sort of help. And in the background, again, I could have more sort of faded out, you know, branches and things. But again, I'm going for this chaotic look. Uh, but yeah, the, the thing is I could, you know, I could do 10 of these. I could do 20 of these. I could play with a million different ways that um, you know, these shapes and trees work and, you know, how that sort of subtly affects the narrative. But the trick is that, you know, I'm not necessarily coming up with a different idea. All I'm doing is manipulating the same three or four things, the three things that I've, you know, chosen here to, to make this uh, more, you know, image work. And I just keep playing with them, right? And keep trying to work with the ideas of composition, what are these rules and tools that I can use to help me make it look interesting? And the more tools you have, the more you sort of notice where you can group things, where you can lean into like, oh yeah, it's kind of like a circle. Hey, right, you know, that kind of works. Let's let's push into that, you know, let's go in that direction. That just gives you a bit more confidence so you're not sitting there going, uh, like, where should I go? Like, what's the point? Um, if you're oscillating between these different ideas, then you'll never get something that's like a strong image, right? That kind of really has a reason for being. Anyway, so what we'll do next is something, uh, again, just a, a little bit different. Um, we'll deal with uh, maybe like a, a composition that is much, much more abstract, right? So maybe we have even less story, but we have to use as much composition as we can to make it look interesting. All right, so for this one, I'm just going to deal with even less context. So we're still going to use Elf Girl. It's still going to be in a forest. But I think what I'll do is just deal with something a little bit closer to those uh, Amano images, right? Where we just have female form plus one element. And in this case, what I'm going to play with is just some flowers, right? So, so thinking about this same idea, but like let's... Let's really look at how we can use a much simpler set of um, elements and, and still play with the composition. It's all a matter of figuring out what tools you have to move around. So, so let's look at that. So in, in this case, what I want to kind of do is really kind of lean into something that's, you know, even more relaxed, right? Like even more simple. Um, and so in this case, we're just going to deal with, again, an, an even like a, a, a less specific version of the female form. So I'm just going to draw character kind of lying down. So this would be a little bit more of like sort of a pin-up um, illustration. And, and for the purposes of this, uh, you know, being on sort of YouTube, we will put clothes on her and that kind of thing. But again, this is probably the kind of imagery where, you know, maybe she wouldn't have clothes for um, the way that most people would sort of draw it. Again, all this is kind of typical, you know, what I sort of classify as like, you know, 80s illustration. 
sort of stuff, right? Right, so we just have the quote unquote female form. You know, similar to your, you know, older artists and the people from the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. This torso is like way too big, right? You often, um, yeah, you know, it's just a matter of painting pretty girls and flowers. But the question is, how do you, how do you make it look good? So things that we have to play with are, yeah, like the hair, right? We can, we can play with the hair. We can play with um, the the environment, right? These sort of flowers. But think about, you know, what what you, what you can have that will sort of work, right? Like, what what can you do that's gonna that's gonna give you some ability to change? Because th this is a kind of thing where you, you can think you can have like a feeling of like, oh, it's you know, I, I sort of get why this would be interesting, but yeah. You know, like like really, it's it's very in danger. This this type of image is, is very much in danger of being super super boring and dull. And I think ultimately, if if you're interested in you know painting this kind of stuff, right, um, that's more sort of you know sort of erotica or um, you know fan service style stuff, is like if if you don't make it good, it's it's people just fall into very sort of simple traps with it, right, um, and you know, just becomes boring and tasteless. Um, so the more artistry you can add to it, the better. All right. Again, in this case, we'll put some sort of clothes on. Don't, don't. Right. And yeah, so we basically have like female form abstract no point to it no story um right but we we have you know sort of different flowers so th th there's a million different ways you could sort of work this right but again let's play with this idea we we have some foreground elements right maybe some some sort of bushes and the way that i normally start roughing these things out the reason i often use these kind of circles and form-based uh block-ins is, is very sort of intentional, right? I, I've done it this way because I feel like this is often something I see, you know, sort of Disney layout artists using um, before the backgrounds go to paint. It's just really working on the drawing. Where are these particular forms, right? Like, where are they in space? So for this one, if we think about some ideas that I could use, right, I, we could sort of think about making it graceful. could think about making it... Um, what else could we do? Um, sort of focus on beauty. And we could sort of make it calm as well. So similar to this, but, you know, slightly different focus. So again, you know, I can think about, you know, where, right, where, where would this hair be? You know, I, I can, I can modify the shape. I can, you know, we could go crazy with the hair. You know, you could put the hair, right, and make, make the hair like a major a major part of the shape, right? It's it's totally up to you. Right, it's coming up there and just kind of spreading down. Why? Because you can play around with that, right? It's not it's not fixed. I mean, the other obvious thing we have is again we can add some sort of bushes. We've got the idea of of flowers, and and we can really play with you know our sort of foreground. Um. You know, and our character is going to be the middle ground. And, and obviously here we're going to have background somewhere. You know, more or less, again, it's it depth this way. It's not, we're not looking, you know, through something, um, you know, super, uh, with, you know, with heaps of depth. Boom, 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 boom. So again, story-wise, what's happening? I don't know. Maybe she sort of sat down um, to to rest, right? And maybe again. So if it was me, that this is where again you you have like a multiple ways to solve a problem, right? And so much of this is a matter of like what do you put down first? Now, probably if I was doing this, I'd do some smaller sketches, right? I'm doing these a little bit larger. 
But this is often how I create thumbnails for covers and stuff. You know, I, I started a little bit bigger. I, I normally even go faster than this, really sort of rough. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, if this was me, I, I would say let's lean into narrative. Like that's a whole part. It's a huge part of what I'm about at the Drawing Codex. And me doing all these things on composition, it is kind of me like cutting against the grain and, and trying to learn about as much of this stuff and sort of share this knowledge as well. But but normally my advice is kind of let's have something interesting happen. Like don't just draw a girl with flowers, right? Like t tell a story, right? That That's what people care about. Um, so if we were to tell a story... You might sort of say, oh, okay, again, this uh, this character has kind of sat down um, and they, they were kind of traveling and they're just kind of having a rest and maybe, again, there's sort of either, uh, I don't know, maybe there's like a, that's her sort of rucksack or backpack thingy here. Um, maybe there's like a water bottle here. This is where I'd sort of start to, talk, to tell story, right? Try and be as narrative as possible. And again, if it was me, I'd probably say like, yeah, let, let's have like a little animal or something, right? Going back to, to this idea, we can have a little sort of animal here, um, right? Get rid of that so we can do a bit more. But yeah, you know, let's have a little dragony thing. Boom. And this instantly gives us something to do. You know, now we're like, oh, okay, I get it. It's a story. This is working well. Let's uh, let's lean into this. Um, but you know, you, you might also just forget about that and just be like, no, no, you know, like, I'm just gonna it's just gonna be flowers. So so what are some other elements we could have, right? As I said, we can obviously work the idea of you know different flowers and spend a lot of time drawing them and. And thinking about that, you know, you could, uh, you know, you could look at how you might use some sort of overlapping forms to play with, you know, sort of depth here, right? You know, make some different little flowers here and there, right? There's many different tools in our toolbox, many different things in our arsenal that we can use to make this work. Now, what do these circles represent? What type of flower do they represent? Well, it doesn't really matter at this stage. I can I can figure that out later. It's not not make or break at this stage. This is just that kind of initial idea like like can I right? Like can I get this to work? But another thing you can kind of have if you are a little bit stuck here is the idea of light and shadow. And this is often like a major tool that people will have in their toolbox to really figure this out. Right? Um, I can, you know, put some of it into shadow. Right? So I can kind of see maybe this, right? Like this bit is in shadow. Right? This bit's in shadow. And yeah, you know, we kind of say, hey, let's put this whole this whole thing in shadow. And, and this gives me a good way to break up those masses, right? Now I have, right? Now I have an excellent structural way to kind of say, look, yeah, this is all in shadow. I've got light and dark here. And maybe I could say, oh yeah, the, so the shadow comes here um, and it's still in shadow here. But maybe there's like a little break in the shadow here, right? So we get a few sort of color pops over here, something like that. Again, you can control exactly where the shadow goes in your image. It's completely, totally up to you. Right? But yeah, you sort of say, oh, this whole this whole thing is, you know, going to be much darker. Or, or you could also, it doesn't necessarily have to be... Um, a value contrast that, that you work, you could work the color contrast, right? So these shadows could be blue, the 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 lights could be much more um, uh, sort of warm, yellow or something like that, what, whatever it is, right? But yeah, you know, you play with, with how that sort of functions, right? Um, and then you could kind of put like maybe this whole, this whole thing is in, is in shadow, right? So this bit goes in shadow. This goes in shadow. This is in light. 
Um, yeah, you know, you, you can cut giant shadows here, right? There's something casting a shadow there. Um, you know, and these can all sort of play into it. And another thing you could use for, for pattern, right? So let, yeah, let's imagine this is, right? This is all in shadow, 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 shadow. And again, having the hair go into shadow, probably a good idea. Tell the story of that shadow and that depth. Still there talking to this dragon guy. Oh, right, shadow, um, super messy sketches, but again, hopefully you get the idea. All right, there would be some shadow under here as well. Bom, bom, bom. And again, depending on, you know, your, your, your style may or may not have shadows, who knows. Either way, you could do it with color, different colors. Um, but the other thing you can do is kind of say, well, let, let's have an interplay between some flowers on the ground, because what we're dealing with is flowers. Got flowers on the ground and grass on the ground. And maybe if we make these flowers like extra warm, extra yellow, right? This will work in with our yellow versus not yellow, um, you know, warm, cool, shadow contrast. But let's think about some of these areas are going to have flowers, right? Little flower plants here. And in other areas, it's going to be grass. And what I can do is use this as a way to create extra shapes that are light and dark shapes. And I can move this around, all right, and create interest. So maybe like over here where I've got this dragon's head, right, we got a million of these bright yellow flowers. Boom, boom. Why? This is a tool I've got. I can create interest, I can create shapes by putting this here. You know, there's a few over here, right? But but most of this is grass. So it's it's all these little things that and this is how I sort of interpret a lot of what happens with those, you know, uh, mono sort of illustrations. Boom, 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 boom. You know, you're just sort of messing around and, and trying to think about like what what would what would draw the interest? Like, what well, I need a little bit here, I need a little bit there. What can I add? Um, and so all of a sudden, you you kind of have something that, you know, I, I guess they would have that pattern, right? I mean, and, and the way I would conceptually be thinking about it, it is similar to you know, if it was a painting, this would be a symphony of impressionist brushstrokes or whatever. Um, you know, I would do it differently if I was doing it in the line and and color style, but you know. I've taken like a, a very simple idea, right? Which is, uh, you know, elf girl, uh, female form, sitting on the ground. Uh, you know, there's nothing interesting about that inherently. Um, you know, in, 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 bar the, the female form, right? Which again, typically, historically, it has had uh, a huge influence um, on what people do define as, as interesting. But, um, you know, like ultimately, there's nothing going on here, right? Um, the, the way that we might make it more interesting is, uh, yeah, lean into these things. See what tools do we have? How can I play with it? How can I plus it? What can I add? Again, if it was me, we try and combine all these concepts. Um, add a little bit of narrative. Add a little bit of story. Now what's going on? What's she saying to this little weaving dragon sort of guy who's sitting here? What are they talking about? What's going on? Is she even awake? Maybe she's asleep and this guy's just maybe he's about to kind of steal her stuff who knows um but, but either way now i have something to go on i'm structuring the image and most importantly um if we look at all of these the the real key thing here is is focus as i said right in the beginning the thing that having some structure or some ability to commit to a setting a key element a subject matter let's say defining what I have to work with and then really trying to say, well, how do I underline and use this to tell this story? It's graceful. I've got beauty. I've got calm. I'm dealing with flowers. Okay. That's a good way to do that. Light and shadow, um, simple motifs, right? I can play with the hair. I can make this feel, make it more, feel more graceful. So I'll do that here again. Um, same thing. What do I have to play with? Almost the same things. But I'm just choosing to change the iconography a little bit and tell a slightly different story. But the key is focus. The, it's, it's the way that this allows me to tell the story and focus on telling the story and problem solve. So 
at any point you're kind of halfway through an image, often what happens is you're kind of like, ah, uh, like with this, it's like, ah, uh, it's not that interesting. This one, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not that interesting. Like, like, how do I make it more interesting? What do I add? You know, like, like, what, what do I add to to this? You know, you you could think about it and say, well, you know, what what can I what can I plus this with? You know, like, how how do I make this more interesting? Um, you know, and, and there could be a million different ways that you do it, right? You could sort of, maybe we could put like a little bit of blood in the water or something like that going here. So we're sort of, you know, we sort of look at this and we're like, oh, what's, what's going on? Um, you know, or we could have, you know, something, something here, right? Where it's like some sort of tentacle or something like that comes out of the water, right? Like we're not quite sure what's what's going on um again something a little bit more creepy but you know I, I'm, I'm working with the ideas i have uh again this is me my, my problem solving is, is always narrative i'm always like let's see if we can tell a little story let's see if we can add a little thing to, to make people start to connect up these ideas um but you know you don't always have to do that think about and problem solve based on the, the things you've got a little bit more here a little bit more there Ah, let's lean into the shape design more. Ah, I need more things here. This doesn't feel complicated enough. I want more of a feeling of pattern. I want more openness here, more darkness here. Um, again, you know, all I need to do is just make the pose look a little bit more tense. We, we're working with the elements we have to increase the drama in the composition and arrange things uh, around a figure or to enhance something. And, and I think having that focus is what allows you to overcome and solve these fundamental problems. The best metaphor and the way I can think of it is that the more you fill your tool kit with interesting ideas for how to create good imagery, the more do you notice how people are doing it by grouping grouping things together, um, you know, using sort of triangular, like um, circular compositional elements, framing the image, whatever it is, S-curves, um, balance, um, again, sense of order, sense of chaos, like all these things and start to build your own tool set of things that work. And then when you go to, you know, sort of create an image, um, think about how you're actually going to problem solve and fix that. I think this is often the biggest problem in the beginning is you kind of get halfway through one of these things and you're like, ah, oh, it's not working. You don't know why. So you screw it up. And I think often composition and the things that you'll learn from books, um, do actually give you a lot of the solutions here. It's just a matter of knowing how to apply them. And, and often if you commit, think about how to solve, then you get into more of a creative flow where suddenly it's a matter of where do I put flowers to make this more interesting as opposed to am I doing this right? Uh, maybe I should change something, right? It, it's like you have a very limited tool set, limited number of things you can change. And I think that makes it much more creative. And I think that is going to allow you to win the fight against Boring images, um, try and make your images more interesting. Lean into a particular creative um, visual note, right? Make it clearer what your image is about. The clearer you are about it, the clearer you're gonna be able to communicate it to someone else. Even if you, again, your goal is like it's clear and <laughs> muddy and you know, um, I'm not really sure what it's about. If, if you're sure that that's the case and you know, you're just doing, again, one of those Amano you know, women with a whole bunch of hair everywhere. It's like, just do that. The, the only thing you've got is hair. You just need to make it look as interesting as possible. And that's your task. Go. Um, so again, clarity is such an important organizing principle. Anyway, I have gone on about this for too long. Hopefully this one has been interesting. Let me know in the comments down below if you got something out of this little sort of demo and concept. Um, very, very simple idea, right? Define what needs to be in your image. What's your key subject? Uh, what else do you have to work with? And then what is the point of your image? And then just, you know, figure out what are the things you can draw and try and use the rules of composition that you know to make an interesting image. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's enough for this one. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.